even if it is only in the in the preaching of the gospel to all of those that we know to even people that we don't know it's really really awesome that we are helping lead the way into new life with messiah and that's really awesome that he entrusts us with that task amen so just uh thought this was interesting a desire to share it. it was thought provoking for me desire to pass it on to you the word chazak it means amen it means strength encouragement or a uh, grip to grip something to hold on to something and not let it go so we're gonna come back uh to this i don't want to get uh too um ahead of myself hopefully this is okay but when we when we read about uh, joshua later in the book of joshua be strong and very courageous it is this word chazak describing strength but when we hear over and over and over again about the heart of pharaoh being hardened it's also the word chazak and so it's actually not um and we've kind of talked about this here and there but it's not a negative word in its essence it's really uh, more of a neutral word that in one sense is describing pharaoh just strengthening his position gripping it not letting it go to go against god versus the lord encouraging joshua in a positive sense to be strong and very courageous for i am with you the lord is telling him very very cool and so uh also uh just kind of things that i was writing down here at the end of reading books of the torah traditionally it said chazak chazak beni chazek which is be strong be strong and may we be strengthened strength for the past the present and the future applying uh, his word to our lives as we read it again underscoring the idea that we're not just here to read some stories and then go on with our life that it's meant to permeate our heart and, and change the way that we the way that we live the way that we believe it's very very awesome and that becomes uh, immensely important if we're going to be uh, leading anybody into anything whether that's a spouse or friends family or at work or at service like this it's very awesome to have what it is that that uh that we believe very firmly grounded very firmly rooted so in that I just want to read through a couple of passages and talk about it a little bit so as far as embracing the role of leadership God has given to us all he calls us he anoints us and he gives us his presence his calling anointing and presence so numbers 27 verse 12 then the lord said to moses go up this mountain of the avarim range and look at the land that i have given to the children of israel b'nai israel when you have seen it you will be gathered to your people you will die basically just as aaron your brother was gathered for in the wilderness of zin during the strife of the community you both rebelled against my word instead of honoring me as holy at the waters before their eyes so the waters of meribah and kadesh in the wilderness of zin very specific what it is that happened here but um just something to keep in mind as we're talking a little bit I felt like it was worth noting moses was genuinely called of the lord to carry a vision of the promised land even though he didn't see it uh excuse me even though he didn't go there he was still allowed to see it god was faithful to show him the fruit of all of his effort even if only from a distance to show him that it was worth it it was worth it even though we had some we had some problems you're not going to be experiencing it the way that joshua and caleb and this this new generation of Israel will I still will allow you to see that uh I wasn't leading you in circles into nothing as so many of the children of Israel thought that I was and there was an end to it and the end is good very very good Moses spoke to the Lord saying may Adonai the Lord God of the spirits of all flesh appoint a man over the community to go out and to come in before them will lead them out and bring them out so that the people of the Lord will not be like sheep without a shepherd 
It's a beautiful thing. At least what we find here. The Lord's telling, I'm going to show you how good is the land in which you will never walk. And instead of lashing out in uh, hatred or contempt or bitterness, the beauty of him as a leader is that his heart is with the people and his heart is after their good. And that's the primary concern that we see him expressing in this moment is not something of selfishness, but of a genuine concern for those that the Lord uh, placed under him in a way. And it's awesome. It's awesome to see it. So leadership, it's uh, given to fulfill a specific calling. We're measured by service, not dominance. Um, I believe we've, uh, again, talked about some of this stuff, but uh, it's cool to have a reminder, I suppose. It's very awesome that uh, it was a very specific task that Moses was asking to be fulfilled. And the one thing that we can trust is that the calling for all of us is a very specific calling. I've said many times, um, it eliminates a lot of competition when we acknowledge that we are the only person exactly like us who will ever live, ever, <laughs> in the history of all of humanity and all of the people who have ever graced this earth. We read about some of them in history books. Some of them will never know that they lived, breathed, and, and died. But there will never be anybody like them again, regardless of who they are. And there will never be anybody like us. And it's not anything to do with pride. It's more to acknowledge that we are not worthless and that if we give up <laughs> on what God has called us to do, that there is a cost to that in the broader body of Messiah, that regardless of how challenging it may feel, regardless of how pointless it may appear to be as we're striving to find what it is that God has, has given us to do or to hang on to it and to be faithful to it. And it all matters because he's called us to do it. And we're measured by service, not dominance. He's asking for them to, to have somebody to look after them, that they not be as, uh, as sheep without a shepherd, instead of clinging to them for himself. It's awesome that, uh, that ideally leadership is not uh, forced, but it's a product of trust that's earned. It was really impactful for me. Uh, it's uh, maybe kind of obvious, but I remember somebody saying the easiest way to tell whether, whether you're actively walking as a leader is to simply look behind you. If anybody's following you, then you are. If not, then they're not. And what impacted me about that is, um, John, you want to be a, a leader worth following, my man. Um, instead of just being concerned with forcing everybody to do what you want them to do. Is what you're doing worth them following you? Right? And this is me just being transparent. <laughs> this is all of us in our lives before the Lord. But is the direction that you're going worth following for your wife, for your family, for a uh, congregation, for your job, John? Because <laughs> it can be easy to, uh, to pull rank and, well, uh, I'm the husband or I'm the dad or I'm the whatever. And... Um, it's awesome that Messiah, he washes the feet of the disciples that he asks to follow them. And he, uh, he dies on the cross as he's asking them to carry theirs. Not asking them to do something he's not willing to do himself. And leading by example, regardless of how painful, <laughs> how painful is that example. And it's, uh, it's inspiring and it's encouraging. Um, as, as all of us have this role to fill... To be, uh, to be somebody that, that pioneers into the direction before we ask people to come along with us. And then there's an excitement in that, just like Joshua and Caleb, that we can go into uh, the land and see how good it is. And then we ask people to come with us. And somebody said this once, and it was very impactful for me, uh, regarding worship, whenever we uh, were playing music and we were uh, singing songs, we want to, we desire the presence of God so powerfully to move. And uh, someone was saying, 
you'll never be able to, uh, just kind of the way they were saying it, you'll never be able to take somebody in the presence of God where you've never been. And the, uh, the idea was you want to you wanna worship God outside of just this right here. Um, this is this is a bit of of overflow of that relationship that we have with him throughout the week, throughout every day, right? If that makes sense. Hey, man, verse 18, the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit, the Ruach, and lay your hand on him. You will have him stand before Eliezer, the Cohen, the entire assembly, and commission him before their eyes. Give to him some of your authority so that the whole community of the children of Israel will obey him. Man, the Spirit of God given dominant emphasis. It doesn't talk about how tall he is or how strong he is or how smart he is or how good of a warrior that he is or how long of a resume that he has. All that is discussed regarding his qualifications is that he has the Holy Spirit. Very, very cool to keep in mind. He was, well, let's see here. Let's keep on reading a little bit. He will stand before Eliezer the Cohen, who will pray and obtain judgments for him by Urim and before the Lord Adonai. At his mouth they will go out, and at his mouth they will come in, he and all the community of the children of Israel with him. Uh, immense authority to uh, essentially command the direction of an entire nation. Moses did as the Lord commanded him. He took Joshua, stood him before Eliezer the Cohen and all the entire assembly, and he laid his hands on him and commissioned him just as the Lord had spoken by Moses' hand. He was presented before the people in a peaceful and orderly manner. So this idea that leadership or authority is received, not taken. Uh, we hear a lot about uh, the rise and fall of governments. And man, there was these really powerful guys, really smart guys. And then they got old and their general executed slash assassinated them. And then they took over, and then somebody else, smarter, younger, faster, stronger, came along and killed them. And so it goes throughout human history regarding uh, leadership that is taken, dominance that is enforced. And it's awesome that we're called to something, uh, something deeper. The Lord anoints us with power for the task at hand, and it always is sufficient. It always is sufficient. Amen. Amen. Joshua 1, 1. Now it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. Fast forwarding here to when he finally takes his place as leader. That the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aide, saying, My servant Moses is dead, very matter of fact. So now arise, you and all these people, cross over this Jordan to the land that I am giving you to them, to the children of Israel. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I'm giving to you, just like I said I would when I was talking with Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon to the, oh man, apologize about that. All right, let's start over. From the wilderness and this Lebanon to the great river, the Euphrates River, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea toward the setting of the sun will be your territory. No one will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. And like we were talking, Chazak, be strong. For you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be very strong, resolute, observe diligently the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you, which... Essentially, it was everything he had spoken up until this time, the covenant, the agreement that he had with his people at this point in history. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may be successful wherever you go. In this book of the Torah, the law, my word should not depart from your mouth. You are to meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will make your ways prosperous, and then you will have good success or be successful. Successful. Have not I commanded you, be strong. Be strong. Do not be terrified or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. He is with us. He is with us. He is with us. 
Amen. So just something I wrote here. Meditation in the word. That was his uh, response. That was to be his response. His foundation for being uh, a, a leader of the, of the children of Israel. That it wasn't to look to the people, essentially, for validation, uh, for credit. But it was to look to the Lord. The standard was outside of himself. This point's a little long, but we'll read it anyway. Leadership or expertise, ultimately, it means nothing without the power of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, and His guidance, His presence. Essentially, He is the one who makes our sacrifice worth the effort. It can, uh, can be uh, easy to pour into ourselves to cultivate a sense of, uh, of credit for where we are in, uh, in life that can feed a sense of dominance or pride over others. That I worked, I worked too hard to be treated this way, right? <laughs> or to be talked to this way, or to, uh, to have to submit to this person, or listen to this other person, or to have to go through what I'm going through. I'm better than this, and, and uh, I know more than them, or I've been here longer than them, or I've, I know how to do a better job than this other person, and, and it can be... Um, increasingly easy to just look to uh, to one another even those that are not in the faith in a sense of competition and even bitterness and hatred and division if our relationship with the lord and, and with one another devolves into uh who can uh, who can earn the most of the lord who has the most uh, who has the most right who can go uh, with the least amount of checks and balances instead of a heart that looks to uh to serve to serve one another right <laughs> amen and it's awesome that as we walk with him and um as we follow him he makes it worth it he makes it worth it I appreciate, I appreciate y'all so, so much. I don't really know what's happening tonight, but we just trust God, right? We trust God. I invite you to bow your heads with me. That was pretty much it. it usually takes longer than that, but we trust the Lord. Am I right? <laughs> Lord, we, uh, we thank you, Lord, uh, just for, uh, for everywhere that you are and that there is a peace there that comes only from you. We thank you, Lord, that... Uh, that as we're reading, well, that it was a, a beautiful life that Moses lived and that your goal was never to crush him and your goal was never to crush the children of Israel. Lord, but if we're going to make it through the challenges that are coming, we cannot abandon you for the sake of our children, for the sake of the generations that are coming after us. Lord, and uh, yeah, it just seems to be uh, better to talk to you than about you <laughs> this evening, even if it's not for too long. But Lord, it's awesome to know, Lord, that your, your primary focus was, was always on clinging to you to go into a, a land of Canaan that was full of promise, that was full of hope, that was full of everything that they could ever want, that they could ever dream of. Every desire that they had to be free, to be a nation, to be a people, to see their children and their grandchildren, to have hope and dream again where there was none before. Lord, but you saw a danger, Lord, in that land if they did not cling to the God who gave it to them. And Lord, we thank you for your scripture, Lord, that we read about how it went. Lord, and that they they didn't, <laughs> as much as you told them they didn't, Lord. And, and some people look at that and, and how can God be so mean when you never wanted it to happen that way? And you took so much of a measure to repeat over and over and over, please don't leave me. Please don't abandon me to your own self, to your own devices, to your own smarts, your own ability. That the other, uh, the other kingdoms, they may look mighty, 
They may look strong and rich and powerful and connected. But like King David was saying, Lord, when he was talking with you, it's so frustrating to see people that hate you. Couldn't care less about you, Lord. Exalted so high, Lord, and so powerful. And where is the judgment? Where is the judgment to look at these nations that mock you and yet are so powerful? Lord, in the revelation that you showed to him. Lord, that they're powerful for now. They're rich for now. Lord, but their end (laughs) is a different story. And it's the end that is your concern for us. As, as, as a people, in a blink of an eye, Lord, this whole, this whole life is going to be over. It's going to be gone. Everything that upset us, Lord, everything that made us cry, that made us laugh, that, that fulfilled us, that disappointed us, things that we hold so tightly on to, Lord, the prayers that we prayed for decades, Lord, in a moment, we blink an eye and it's all gone. Lord, everything, Lord, that, that, we've, that we've done, that we can touch, that we can see. And what will, be, what will be left, Lord? It's that that was built on faith, that was built on your word, that was built on a foundation that is worth something. Lord, when we all open our eyes into the real world, <laughs> The real world beyond this brief little thing that we call life in in this world that we know now. And we don't want all of our efforts to go to waste. We don't want all of those decades, all of those prayers, all of those relationships and hopes and dreams and goals and pains and sorrows and happiness to be wasted. And so, Lord, you gave us a book. You gave us your son so that it wouldn't be, Lord, in all the effort that we put into making it out of this place in one piece. Lord, that that you're here. Lord, not not to take the storm away always, Lord, but to take away the storm inside. And, 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 and Lord, you empower, you empower us to, to walk in victory over the storm, regardless of, of how the waters are in life. Lord, and, and really, really hoping, Lord, that this is for, uh, just for somebody here. Even if they're online and they, they're not watching it yet, Lord. <laughs> they may not even be born yet. Lord, but uh, but we just want to want to heed your voice, Lord, as you implore us and beg us with everything inside of yourself, not to let go of you, not to let go of the words that you speak and the love that you give for us, Lord. And, um, and there's a strength in you that that cannot be overcome, and there's a clarity and a peace, Lord, that that no amount of hardship can sway. When all the world is falling away, Lord, we only stand because we're standing in you. And it might look like we are so smart and we are so mighty and we are so victorious. And how did you do that, Lord? And we hope with everything in our being, Lord, that in that moment when we triumph over everything in this world, Lord, that our gaze would still be pointed up to you. Lord, that it was it was only you. Lord, it wasn't us and ourselves. There's nothing that we could do, but we're glad that you did it all. You did it all for us. We thank you for it. Glory to God for it. In Messiah Yeshua's name, amen. Amen. Invite you to your feet.